Hey guys, how are you going? My name is Dom and today I'm going to be taking you through a couple of best practices and modern techniques when it comes to including JavaScript in your HTML web pages. Now, right here I've got this index HTML file and it's got a single button inside of it. The index.js file is the main JavaScript file for this page. We're going to be including it uh, of course in the HTML file, but it simply uh, gets a reference to the button by the ID, then it's going to log out two messages, including the button itself. So one of the most common issues uh, when it comes to including a JavaScript file incorrectly is that you get uh, errors in regards to accessing elements before they have been you know, rendered on the DOM or on the document itself. So that just means that you call get element by ID as an example too early before the element can actually get a chance to exist. Then you get errors like uncaught error, unable to call this method on this, um, it's undefined and things like that. So we're gonna be solving that problem in today's video. I made, a, uh, I made a similar video here and there in the past in regards to uh, like the defer attribute and different ways to include scripts, but this one's gonna be an all-rounder, um, just overall best practices and so on. So I'm gonna be showing you four different ways to include your JavaScript file, four common things you may have seen or what you should be doing from now on. So let's begin with the first one, including the script file inside the head. So this would look something like this. I would say script source going to index.js. This appears inside the head of the document. Now, if you've been coding on uh, you know, web development for some time, you would immediately think to yourself, well, that's bad. It should be on the, uh, on the uh, bottom of the body. So we're gonna get to that very shortly. But for those of you who don't know why this is bad, let me save this and go back in the browser here, go in the console and we get null for the button. So uh, I actually don't have access to the button. It is null because this code runs up here before the button had a chance to even exist in the document. So that's where some of the errors come from. If I say my button dot add event listener and try to add a click event and so on, just real quick here, just to further demonstrate, um, you know, you may see an error like this and that's sort of why. So I'll save this back in the browser and you get things like this. I cannot read properties of null. So how do you fix this? Well, you simply move the script tag to the bottom of the body. I think most of you guys already know this. Okay, save this back in the browser and now it's fine. So that's your second method. Move the script to the bottom of the body. That is pretty well known. It's still used and it's still okay to go ahead and use this method. It's perfectly fine, right? Just make sure it's on the bottom of the body. Um, but there are two more ways you can do it and arguably better ways. Um, and that includes going back inside the head actually. So let's paste that script back inside the head here and we're gonna be using the defer attribute, okay? So just by simply saying defer, you've effectively achieved a similar result, if not the exact same result, to including the script on the bottom of your body. Defer is going to essentially be a non-blocking request, okay? So, you know, it's sort of just gonna run in the background, so it's gonna include your file and still do things while it's doing that, right? But the main benefit that I see of defer is that the script is only going to execute once the document has been loaded. Save this back in the browser and the button is available. Even though we call the script before the button exists, it's gonna wait until the document's ready, then it's gonna execute the script. And that's why um, there's no errors here, right? Fantastic. That's your third method. I encourage you to use this one. However, there is a fourth way you may choose to include your JavaScript files. And it's got an added benefit, okay? This here is by using a type of module, okay? You may have seen the ES6 import export syntax before. It is fairly common uh, in obviously TypeScript and if you're doing React or any sort of uh, frameworks and so on. But if you're using vanilla JavaScript in the browser, you need to include a type of module. This is how you would do it. So you can actually use your import export syntax in the front end, in the browser, um, just natively. So 
you can do so by giving this a type of module. And what's good is VS Code has a, a snippet, a code shortcut uh, for this. You can just say script colon module. So emits, that's the word I was looking for. So VS Code's got an emit. You press enter on that module, bang, and it gives you the autofill. So we're saying script type module source index.js. Save this back in the browser. There are no errors. So this here achieved the same result as defer. Okay. Why is that? Well, type module is deferred by default. So this is just like saying defer like this. It is always there by default. You can't change it. Okay. That's a good thing, right? So let's not complain about that. Um, but the added benefit of type of module is that you can now use import export syntax. Let's make a new file called utils.js. Uh, I'll just say export function add a and b. This function is going to return a plus b. Just to demonstrate, guys, I can now say something like uh, console.log. I can say add, okay? Just like this, get that automatic import on the top there. And I can say three plus five, we should get eight in the console. And we don't, let me just fix this up, utils.js, be careful of that also guys. So make sure to have your .js extension back in the browser, we get eight right there. So we can see, we can use the import export syntax, import add from util.json, sorry, dot, uh, dot, uh, .js there, and we can use the import export syntax. I've got a whole video dedicated to that as well. If you're interested, I'll leave it links below in the top right corner of this video. But there you go, guys. By using the type of module, you're able to use the import export syntax and you have the added benefit of uh, not encountering those errors with your uh, elements and things like that. Now, there is, in my eyes, one downfall to using type of module, and that is that, uh, well, you can't actually access things outside of the uh, each file itself unless you export it, right? That includes the console. So if you're like me and, you know, you're a little bit, uh, you, know, you, you know, you like to do things a bit more uh, openly and a bit more quickly. You want to do like, for example, my button as an example, I press enter. Well, this one worked because technically in the console, you can access IDs by just, you know, doing your, uh, your ID string like that. So that's a bad example. Let me just uh, actually demonstrate this properly. Let's make a new constant called D, uh, username equal to decode. And what you'd normally be able to do is you'd normally be able to just say username like this, oops, like this, press enter and you get to see the thing. But in this situation, you can't. It's saying that it's undefined, not defined, right? That's because it's a module. You can't access this constant outside of the module, outside of this file. If I change this back to just simply defer, press enter, so sorry, save, back in the browser, uh, well, we have this issue. We have, we have to remove that import statement. That's that's obvious, isn't it? Let me, just, let, me, let, me, let me get rid of that and then get rid of the add line as well and get back to this username situation back in the browser. I can now say username and it works. I get decode right there. So a type of module is going to block you from accessing those variables globally, if that makes sense. But aside from that, I think, in my opinion, if you can have a single JavaScript file for your web page, for example, index.js, and use the import export syntax to import other files, dependencies, classes, functions, whatever it is, uh, try and do that. But if you have issues because it's client side and you need, you really need to access variables globally and it's just not working for you, I would say go for the defer option. So either use defer or use a type of module. Fantastic. So that is all for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed that one and you learned something. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.